Hello guys, welcome back to another video. I want to make this video because I've seen a lot of hype with the new MacBook Air 2020. And I was thinking of because I was using the iPad Pro 2018 for a while now, and it's amazing with this new uh, iPad OS new version they released. And I was thinking what a better video that to buy a MacBook Air and do a video comparison between CPU, GPU tests to see what's the best device for you in 2020. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Uh, so first thing first, uh, these days safe is the most important thing. Uh, when I order a MacBook Air and I'm going to be doing the recommendation for you, just go online, select your order that you want to buy on Best Buy app and then select, um, select the item you want and place the order. You will receive a notification email that will tell you where to park your car once you get to the store because you cannot get inside these days. So, you so now first let's start with the specs. Here we have the iPad Pro 2018 CPU A cores, custom ARM based A12X uh, CPU made by Apple. GPU is an integrated Apple made GPU as well. RAM, we're talking about 4 gigabytes of RAM and the storage is 64. Remember, this is an old version for 2018, but the new version came with a 120 gigabyte default. Keyboard and mouse support with new cases for $299. We're gonna be adding it in order to have a fair comparison. Okay, now the specs of the MacBook Air. So now the CPU we have is a Core i5 10 Gen 1.1 GHz, is a quad core CPU. And we select this one instead of going with the i7 because at this point, we don't see any difference um, upgrading to the i7. Maybe a few points, but at the end, both CPUs with thermal throttling, so it doesn't make sense for us to buy the i9. The GPU is an Intel integrated graphics and Intel said that it will be 80% more powerful than previous generation. So we have to see that. The RAM, we got eight gigabyte and the storage at 512 gigabyte. Okay, so looking at the specs, you may think that the MacBook Air will outperform the iPad Pro, but you will be shocked with the results that we're gonna show you in this video. So now we're gonna be running the benchmark and we're gonna start with the Geekbench running CPU and GPU tests. On the CPU side, you already know it's the same for both of them. And on the GPU, we're gonna be running, we're gonna be running Metal because it's the API that Apple use for graphics. Okay, and we're gonna compare the difference between them. Now I'm gonna be talking about the pros and cons of having an iPod Pro and, instead of, and having a MacBook Air. So you can decide by yourself what is the best option for you. I wrote down these things. Uh, it's a lot of things to talk about, so I don't cannot remember and I don't have a teleprompter in front of me. So I'm gonna be reading to you uh, using my phone, okay? So the first thing is the iPod Pro. They have a first is a lightweight device, just one pound, excellent battery life, tablet mode, touchscreen. iPad OS is a very fast and well-optimized OS specifically for the iPad Pro, big libraries of game compared with the MacBook Air. It's 120, one of the main things I care about is 120 hertz of the screen. And this is important for gaming when you are editing photos, when you're editing videos, when you browse the web, you realize how, how important it is to have 120 hertz. And once you've been using it for one or two months, re believe me, once you come back to your MacBook, you really don't want you, you will see the 60 hertz like a very slow laptop. It actually feels slow. That's that's the feeling when you go from 60 hertz to 120 hertz. Okay, 
Uh, the iPad Pro is cheaper and give you better performance. We're gonna get into that uh, on the benchmark when we're gonna be running here. Uh, it's built in on cellular mode. This is a must for people that travel a lot. You got your SIM card here on the top, you plug them in, whatever you are, you're covered. You don't need to connect to Wi Fi and use a VPN. You don't need to do anything of that. Just your cellular, um, your cellular SIM card here and it will work perfectly, right? Uh, the back camera and front camera are much better than the MacBook Air and you have back camera. So let's say you want to make uh, kind of a video recording you and recording uh, on the back. That's uh, That option now is available with an application, something you can do here that you cannot with the MacBook Air. Okay, uh, another thing is they come with pencil support and this is really important tool and it's uh, the best pencil you can get online for any tablet. This is very important for artists, uh, people that work with photos, with, uh, with sketch. All things. This is really, really handy for them. Okay, and um, and the last thing I really, I, I think is really important is a feature that is in iPad and it's also in iOS. It's called shortcuts. Shortcuts. I use them all day long, and uh, they're a simple way to just run your application. I'm gonna be doing videos about how to set up your shortcut and how to optimize your workflow and make your life easier. Okay, so those are the pros for the iPad Pro. Now we're gonna be talking about the iPad Pro cons, and that there's a few of them. Right, so the first one is dual monitor support uh, really suck. It's not a, they have something that you connect to because you have the USB-C and you can connect the monitor. And if you're working in certain apps, they work as a secondary monitor. But most of them, when you connect your iPad, it just gives you the same layout screen. Even if you have 4K monitor, it's never gonna output a 4K for the operating system. And this is something I think Apple should work on that. It, it's an easy fix they can do in next release. That when you connect your USB-C type monitor to it, it will give you just an extend monitor instead of a mirroring one because nobody wants this. Okay, that's something that, and this is something that of course you can get on the MacBook. The second thing is I cannot connect external GPUs. This is USB-C, it's not Thunderbolt. It means that if you want to get more power of the GPU of this thing, you cannot actually connect anything else. You're tied to what is inside. Okay, and uh, the third thing on the cons is the app limitations. A lot of apps I used to, I'm gonna be doing a full review video for it uh, because I've been using it for a while now. I'm a developer and then DevOps, and I usually, uh, usually I use a lot uh, terminals. I use GitHub uh, to write code. I use uh, Visual Code for IDE, for Python. And in this thing, I have some few apps that are working pretty well. I've been using them a lot. And there's always workarounds on it, but it's better to have just a MacBook in that term that you can just launch with Visual Studio and then use your um, the full experience desktop uh, coding on a MacBook. There's a few pros here. Actually, the first one I found that is the full ready laptop. It's just a laptop. When you buy it, it comes with the keyboard, it comes with the mouse, and it is, it's just a laptop. It works like that. Like we get used to it. Uh, the operating system is a full desktop, so it works perfectly. This thing you can connect up to two motors and that really help you um, you, in your workflow uh, every day, it's something that you cannot do on the on the iPad. But this category that I'm talking here, this thing I'm talking here is um, we're discussing a lightweight um, laptop or iPad, a computer to work every day because you're gonna have your main workstation. It's gonna be it can be a Mac Pro, it could be a Hackintosh, it could be a Windows PC, it could be a powerful laptop from Windows or a, a MacBook 16 inch. It's something when you get serious and you're gonna be real work on those laptops. These devices is just something portable that you want to have and you want to use it on the go. So the test has finished and as you can see here, we got a winner. And the winner was the iPad Pro. Even with four gigs of RAM compared with eight gigs, we saw a better performance on CPU. Multicore is two times the performance of the MacBook Air. And remember, this is a 2019 iPad Pro, but the ARM system and the software is so well integrated that you will get better performance here than on the new MacBook Air. Uh, in terms of graphics, and this is very important for Photoshop, for video editing, different uh, that utilize the graphics, and for gaming, for example, uh, the iPad Pro was a thousand points better than the MacBook Air. I usually use this on my workstation right now, actually, because I can connect a monitor, keyboard, and mouse, and even um, I can uh, with my VNs, I can connect to my virtual machine that I have on my server, giving me the full desktop experience when I work uh, on Linux, for example, that I need to use powerful GPUs. I think the idea of life is to minima minimize um, how many things you have. These days, a lot of videos online talking about uh, any new hardware that came up to the market, and there is no need for people to actually jump in and buy the latest one because it doesn't make any sense. There is no huge improvement. The way I see it is I have my server, 
uh, where I have my compute power, let's say the RTX video card for development work. And then I have a small devices like this iPad Pro, or it could be a MacBook, it could be a Windows PC, uh, Razer Blaze, one of the best ones uh, for that. But And that with that laptop, you can connect to your uh, main workstation and do your job. And if you need something powerful, then you will need your workstation. Could be a Mac Pro and put just everything there and it works perfect. Or just you can build uh, a Windows PC, which is always cheaper. And with the RTX video card, the, per the performance will be amazing for any job like video editing, 3D rendering on any other kind of software. So my thoughts is I will keep with the iPad Pro and I will return the MacBook Air. So let me know in the comments below, what do you think? What of these two devices do you prefer? Uh, particularly if you want to go with the MacBook Air or you want to go with the iPad. If it's the first time that you visit our channel, subscribe to the channel, activate the ring bell so you don't miss any other videos like this. So that's it for the video of today. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe. Remember, it's always, always free.